before I even really begin to talk about Mass Effect 3's, um, I'm just going to say that it's not this video is not going to be about Mass Effect 3's ending. Instead, it's going to be about like Mass Effect 3 as a whole in terms of the game's problems aside from the ending. And even before the game was released, I had a couple problems with this game. So this video is going to be pertaining to that, and then I'm going to make another video specifically talking about different aspects of the game's ending. So before the game was even released, the first sort of troubling sign that came upon me was when Bioware announced that there was going to be multiplayer in this game. Now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy multiplayer games, you know, Halo, Call of Duty, Gears of War, all those games, but in Mass Effect, multiplayer simply doesn't really belong in the series. Mass Effect has always prided, prided itself on being a single player um, experience, and it's always just been about a, a role playing game where it's your character is fully immersed in the story and there's no sort of multiplayer component to it at all, and the multiplayer really isn't needed. I mean, what, what's the point? None of them, I don't think any of the true Mass Effect fans really wanted a, uh, a multiplayer mode to begin with because we already have all these other games. I mean, it seems like Mass Effect is just starting to appeal more towards the, um, the mass crowd as opposed to sticking with what it's supposed to be in terms of like, it's supposed to be solely an RPG slash with action elements into it, but not a whole, you know, multiplayer component to it. I mean, that's just ridiculous, I think. I mean, I think it's just sort of, over the course of its series, it's become less of what it was, it's sort of changed. There's a difference between evolution and change in games, I think. When you say something, a game evolves, that to me means expansion. It means sort of polishing and expanding upon, um, like, the best element in the game. For example, in the Saints Row series, I thought Saints Row 2 was the perfect evolution from Saints Row. It expanded upon the city, it expanded upon customization, it expanded upon um, combat as well, and sort of like fun and humor and the story as well. It just, everything was sort of expanded. It took out like the parts that weren't good and added parts and, and expanded upon the uh, good aspects of the first Saints Row game. And that, that's a good example here. Mass Effect isn't really expanding anything. Instead, of they've, they've sort of taken out some stuff as well. And they've sort of added in a bunch of stuff that really isn't necessary or that, and that doesn't really add anything. It's not really part of um, the uh, series as a whole. I mean, this is an, a, a sort of extreme example, but that's sort of like, you know, <laughs> imply like that's just sort of like adding guns or like a different sport into it, like a, an NBA 2K game. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. That element, that aspect of the game just simply doesn't belong. Another thing is, I, which I don't really know very much about, by the way, but it's this uh, voice connect crap for the Xbox 360. I don't know any person who would really use that. I mean, I don't know what it's exactly supposed to do. I'm assuming it, it pertains uh, towards directing your squad mates or something like that in battle, but really... I mean, first of all, Mass Effect, I don't think necessarily should pride itself on combat because that's not what the whole point of the series has been. I mean, yeah, it's nice that the combat has been improved over the course of the series, but it's never been what the main draw of the series has been. And just adding a bunch of extra crap for that aspect is just not really meaningful or impacting towards the package as a whole, I think. Finally, which is probably, this is probably the worst part about it, is that the, um, these different game modes, like these different, like, story play modes that are featured in Mass Effect 3. What I mean by this is that there's, like, the story mode, and then there's, like, a mode where, like, the game automatically decides what you, like, your choice is for you, as in you're playing the game like a normal third-person shooter. Now, that's just terrible, I think. That's, that's, like, that's just like a disservice towards the entire series for the developers themselves to just sort of set back and contradict and mar all the previous role-playing aspects of the game, and that's player choice. And you're just basically allowing players to not do that. I mean, that just seems like a, a, another, like I said before, in terms of the multiplayer, that just seems like, uh, you know, Bioware attempting to appeal towards more people with instead of like pleasing their own fan base, I mean they are. I mean, what are they trying to do? They're just trying to make more money. But you know what? You know how they make more money is by making good games, and all these sort of you know extra aspects aren't really needed and aren't wanted by the fans of the series. I mean, who like who plays an RPG to to not make choices for like you know? That's what you have Gears of War for. That's what you have Rainbow Six for. That's what you have I don't know Uncharted for. for like these third person action shooters. When you look for an RPG, you want dialogue, you want choice, you, you want your choices, you want, you, you're building up a character that impacts the game based on what your choices are, what your morals are, and having the, an option like that 
to um, just get rid of all, to throw that out of the window. It just seems insulting, not only towards the series, but towards like the fans themselves. I mean, I'm saying, I mean, I'm not saying you have to choose that option, but it just seems insulting towards the series to like go against everything that an RPG stands for in general. Now, as for the actual game itself, let me just start by talking about the um, introduction to the game. I thought the introduction to the game felt a little bit too rushed, in my opinion. Especially, like, there's just an increase in auto-dialogue at the beginning, and Shepard is talking to this new guy named James Vega, who the, the audience or the player doesn't know, and I don't think that's a very good way of introducing a new character in the series to begin with. And second of all, I don't think the, um, the beginning really explains a whole lot of, between what happened from um, the end of Mass Effect 2 to the be to the start of Mass Effect 3. I mean, it seems like Shepard's ship was impounded on the Earth for some reason. I mean, the thing is, that's implying that the player already played the Arrival DLC from Mass Effect 2. Now, that I mean, I did that and I imported that that uh, save file from Mass Effect 2 into Mass Effect 3 with the Arrival DLC completed. So that's even even then, even knowing why he like you know the sort of basic idea of the beginning of the game, it still doesn't seem very fleshed out in terms of them explaining what really happened. And besides that, I don't know if the game would start any differently if the player hadn't played the Arrival DLC in Mass Effect 2, because you know that whole Batarian system was blown up because of the uh, mass relay getting destroyed by the asteroid and all that shit. I just don't know. I don't know if the game will be different if you didn't play that game. But either way, I felt the introduction was incredibly rushed. I don't feel like there's enough exposition in terms of setting up the scene because the most important part of the entire series is when these Reapers are coming down and stuff. But then at the same time, you're just trying to learn the game, you know, like the basic movements and stuff. So the player doesn't really get immersed in your story because, it, like, the player is concentrating on, like, getting accustomed to the controls and, the ga like, the gameplay itself as opposed to, like, being immersed and engaged in the story at this point instead of concentrating. It's not quite as impacting for the Reapers to just drop down on Earth when you're just getting used to, like, the combat of the game at the same time. I personally felt like the Reapers shouldn't have come in in the first five minutes of the game. I think they should have come in, you know, there should have been at least another, like, 30 minutes of solid exposition, exposition and um, introduction to the, to the game. Sort of like what Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 were. They never started out, like, so fast. Like, they gave the player, like, a chance to sort of get immersed into the story a bit more instead of having everything rushed at you. That's what I felt the, for the introduction. It felt just extremely rushed there's no real there's a lot of auto dialogue like i said before and the player sort of has like no real um you know impact towards like what's going on here because of the auto dialogue which means like shepherd hardly is your character anymore if you have him just auto dialogue talking with all the other characters the entire time Instead of what the introduction we got, I mean, we obviously we don't want all that auto dialogue crap in there. And I would have gotten rid of, I would have added an extra 30 minutes to the introduction to sort of, you know, set the uh, exposition, you know, introduce the uh, player to, towards the current circumstance of the series. Everything just kind of felt thrusted at you. And you weren't really like, you, didn't, you weren't given the proper amount of time to sort of get immersed and engaged in the story. And that's what the introduction sort of put me off. And I felt also... Like, a lot of the dialogue was pretty weak as well, especially between Anderson and uh, Shepard um, during some of the, um, well, while they were, like, inside that building, shimmying along the ledge, and also when Shepard got back on that ship, on, on, on his Normandy ship and fleeing from Earth, I thought that whole entire scene was very cheesy and poorly written as well. So all those elements didn't really add up to me in terms of providing an, a good, solid opening conclusion to drive the uh, narrative forward at all. Not only is the option of like asking questions towards your squad mates completely limited as well, but they completely eradicated and just got rid of the middle option in terms of the dialogue wheel. And I felt that was just extremely lazy, and that was just a cut corner. There's no, they just cut a corner there. There's no real excuse for that. I remember I read somewhere on a on a Bioware post site or whatever that they said, "Oh yeah, Shepard wouldn't have a middle dialogue because it's the end of the war or something like." I mean, that just there's no excuse for it. I'm sorry, there's just no excuse for Mar and getting rid of an essential aspect that was uh, flourished and kept in the previous two games. There's absolutely no reason why uh, they should do that aside from just them being lazy. Like they just, That's another uh, problem I had with that game is that I just didn't feel like they put the amount of, same amount of effort into this game that they had in the previous two installments, and that just really pissed me off as a fan of the series. 
Another big problem was those renegade interrupts featured in the game that you had to occasionally um, perform. Basically, an example of this is um, when you shoot Udina when he was about to shoot the Asari counselor or whatever. Like, that's not necessarily a, really a renegade action to just shoot based on instincts because you're not intent intentionally like being mean to other people you know you're not intentionally trying to cause harm to other people like it's not ref necessarily reflective of a renegade shepherd a renegade shepherd it uses brutality uses just coldness and without sympathy that's just combat instincts kicking in that's not that's something that either neutral renegade or paragon shepherd would do so why is it labeled as a renegade interrupt that doesn't make any sense to me at all i mean it seems like those renegade especially during the kai lang sequence which i actually which i liked by the way don't i mean i think every that shouldn't even been a renegade interrupt that should have been it like him you know stat like slashing his sword that, that was that was my favorite part of the entire game by the way but i mean they feel like too they seem too necessary to, in order to survive and especially during the end of the game, sorry, I, I, I told you I wasn't going to talk about it, but using it as, as an example in this case, um, when the elusive man was about to shoot Anderson, that felt, it just feels too necessary. Like, using a renegade interrupt has never been necessary before. And in here, like, it's just, it's just not reflective of a renegade action that a renegade shepherd would do because it's just combat instincts, and that sort of pissed me off as well. The final sort of aspect uh, that I'm going to talk about in this particular video. I'm going to make a part two briefly because I forgot to, I'm not going to have enough time to mention all my points in this one video, but um, it's the lack of exploration in this game and sort of like the lack of intrigue and interesting areas to explore. In Mass Effect 1, we had the whole citadel to explore. We had, we, you know, discovered a lot of different species there. There were a lot of different characters and side quests available just through exploring the game, just through like going to different aspects it, areas in the Citadel. I mean, the Citadel was huge in the first game. I just felt like it was so well designed and just like so, like the layout and the landscape of the area was just so interesting to explore. And it just felt like it was just like in every area, there was just like a bunch of unique things to do in every single area, unique characters to meet and everything like that. It felt like an RPG because that's, that's what I look for. That's part of what I look for in RPGs. Actually, it's a main part of what I look for in RPGs and that's just like exploration of different world or different areas and you know just like in fallout for example that that series that's prides itself a lot on exploration in terms of exploring those wastelands and finding side quests and meeting new people and discovering new weapons and now all this all that other all that good stuff that comes with an rpg and 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 then from mass effect 1 to mass effect 2 they sort of mainstreamed it and streamlined it so then there's sort of less uh there was still some exploration but it was just sort of subsided a bit because there's only four planets. Tuchanka was extremely small. The Citadel was, you couldn't, re, that was what oh, one of the things that pissed me off about Mass Effect 2 is that you couldn't re-enter the uh, Presidium area in Mass Effect 2. I mean, you could go into Anderson's office, but that still pissed me off. That, that, but the thing is, it was still adequate. It was still an adequate amount of exploration because we also had planets like Omega and Ilium. And even though, the, like, in there, they had interesting art designs, even though they did sort of rip it off from Star Wars a bit, they were still had some exploration into it. Yes, they weren't that big, but they were better than what we got in Mass Effect 3. And which is what I'm going to talk about here. Mass Effect 3 only has the Citadel, and it's basically Mass, Mass Effect 3 Citadel is basically slightly bigger and then, like, one of those planets from uh, Mass Effect 2. Like, it's probably slightly, it's probably, at best, it's, like, probably 1.5 times as big as the Citadel feature, uh, uh, part featured in uh, Mass Effect 2. And that really pisses me off, because there's no incentive to really explore um, anymore. It just feels like there's no exploration, there's no, like... I mean, it just the Mass Effect universe has so much potential in its characters, in its environments, you know, in its interactions and side quests and discovery, and that aspect has just been completely eradicated in this installment and that's what pisses me off as an RPG fan and as a Mass Effect fan that's something that I look for in RPGs and that was just absent in this uh, particular game so basically that's all I'm going to talk about in this particular video and in the next video I am have a couple more aspects to talk about uh, in terms of the game as a whole and then I'm going to get into the uh, Mass Effect 3's ending in terms of the indoctrination theory and how bad the endings are and how they could be could have been improved and my thoughts on the endings as a whole so thanks for listening to this